Hey guys, welcome to my video on R Markdown. If you don't know what R Markdown is, it's a really cool thing you can do in R that helps you build documents that can include text, they can include numbers, they can include code, graphs, everything, and it all gets updated. Now, why is that useful? So here's this document I'm providing for you. Uh, it's got all this stuff in it. And now imagine you're working on homework, if you're a student, or project, if you're doing your thing, or actual work. And you know there's gonna be an iterative process where you know maybe you make an update in the data, or maybe you are tuning your model and changing it around a little bit and you wanna compare the results. And for whatever reason, homework, report, whatever, you have to be able to present these results. Our markdown provides a way to include explanations, code, results, graphs, everything all in one place. And then when you make changes, you don't have to change everything else. It all just happens. I don't have to copy paste a new graph into Microsoft Word every time I run it. It will just automatically update the graph and so on. So um, in the video description, there's a link to this document so you can see what it looks like. There is a link to the code in my GitHub profile. Right? So that's all there. I'm going to go through it fairly quickly and just point out some things that are important. But mostly this is going to be, here's some resources. You'll have to dig through this code and make sense of it. I'll try to help though. So let's go to R. All right, first thing, when you start R Markdown, uh, you'll probably start by creating a new file. Uh, it'll give you the option of choosing HTML, PDF, or Word. If we're just getting started, just do HTML. I mean, you can make it a Word document or a PDF if you want to, but for our purposes, we'll just do HTML. And that will show at the top. If I wanted to change it to a Word document, I could. Oops, I spelled Word wrong. Right. That would totally change its output. I'd have to save a new file, but I'm not going to do it right now. Now, when you do this, it's going to give you a bunch of code already. You don't have to keep any of this code. But what it's doing is it's giving you some ideas about how to use things, right? Like there's the formatting for including a link. Here's the formatting for, well, let's see what it does. I'm not sure what that does. Neither are you. Um, there's some code in there, whatever. If you want to see what all this does, you click knit. And knit this as a new file. And knitting always takes a few seconds. When your file is smaller, it goes a lot faster. Uh, but yeah. When your file gets bigger, it can take longer. All right, so what did it do? All right, here is my markdown file that just knitted. And it has some of it with headings. It has, there's that link. A knit was with two stars around it. That made it bold. And then it shows like what happens when some code runs. Cool. So, Let's go back to the code and we'll start digging into it a little bit. All right, here's my code. I'm gonna give you this intro to R Markdown. There's the link to the code so you can use it yourself. Uh, I give you an overview of what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you how to write paragraphs and headings, how to format your text a few different ways, how to include mathematical equations, how to run code chunks, and then ultimately how to include your code results in your text. Uh, for more details on using R Markdown, there's that link. Okay, first things first. If you want to type normal text, it's easy. You just type it. It just will. You don't have to comment it out or anything. You just type. If you want to do headings, you mess around with these hashtags or these pound signs or these ampersands or whatever you want to call it. Right? If I precede my text with a single hashtag and a space, it's going to create a big heading two hashtags in a space, it's gonna create a small one, and so on. Uh, let me show you briefly what that's gonna look like. I guess I need to knit it first. So while it's knitting, I'll show you the next line of code. 
Uh, we're also going to look at how to make it look like it's already code or how to make the text look like it's code from R. We're gonna look at how to italicize, bold, and underline your text. And I show you all the different versions. Okay, italicize is single stars, bold is double stars, underline has HTML tags. Um, and if you look, you'll notice that here, I am using these back ticks that I use to make it look like it's in R code. And the results are kind of interesting because it lets me, let's see, where were we? Yeah, so there's the different headings, right? One, one hashtag was big heading and so on. Uh, when I put the back ticks around it, around my text, it makes it look like it's copied from R code. If I put a single star around it, it italicizes. But when I did back tick and the stars, it shows you what I typed to make it look like this. Um, and then I demonstrate bold. I show how to bold and what the results are of bolding. Uh, I show how to underline and what the results are of underlining. Okay, it's all there. Uh, now, mathematical equations, this was convenient. Um, or can be, especially if you're doing homework or some sort of professional presentation. Uh, you're gonna rely on LaTeX here. If you've never used LaTeX, here's a quick cheat sheet that I pulled off of a very brief Google search. And I give an example where we're gonna do a regression where y equals beta zero plus beta one x plus epsilon. And the true values of beta zero are 10 and beta one are two and epsilon is standard normal. And we're going to estimate and get y hat which is a function of those. All right, how do you get that cool text in here? It's actually pretty straightforward, if you know LaTeX. Uh, and that is, you just put a dollar sign around your LaTeX code. Okay. Dollar sign creates equations. Now LaTeX, it's not that scary. If you want a Greek letter beta, backslash beta. If you want a subscript zero, underscore zero. There's a bunch of other things you can do. You can do all kinds of crazy math with it, or at least present all kinds of crazy math. Uh, hats, backslash hat, right? It's not very complicated. There's a cheat sheet here to help you out, but that's how you put math in. Cool feature is when you hold your cursor over a different equation, it tells you what it's gonna look like. You notice this one doesn't show me an equation because because it's not an equation, there's no dollar signs. But if I put it over this one, it shows me what that equation is going to look like. So as you're typing, you can make sure you're on the right track. Now, to run code. It's easier to explain with a video than it is to type it out. I apologize for the way it was written. But it starts with back tick, back tick, back tick, curly bracket, R curly bracket. And then it ends with back tick, back tick, back tick. Those create a code chunk. Now you don't have to type that every time. If you have a non-Mac, if you have a Windows computer control, Alt I creates the beginning and the end of your R, of your code chunk. Now let's talk briefly about what the R means. The R specifies we're using R code. R Markdown can also use Python and SQL or SQL or whatever you want. Uh, maybe not whatever you want, but I know it does those two. So in this R chunk, code chunk, I created beta 0 to 10, beta 2 equals 1, just like I said. Here's 100 random normal error terms. Here are 100 observations drawn from a uniform distribution. And there's my Y. Okay. If you don't know how regressions work, I apologize. I'm just demonstrating some code. And then I sort it all in a data frame. And then note, you can also mess with how much of the code presents by dealing with echoes and including and other features where you can make it so that the code runs invisibly in your R markdown file. It doesn't have to always show everything. You can hide stuff. So it runs the code, but you don't have to present all the code because no one wants to see that if you're doing a big project. All right, now how about displaying a graph? It's easy. Code chunk, graph. There's no special display command or anything. It's just code chunk and graph. 
So let's take a look at this stuff. What all has happened with my code chunks? The code chunk, which are the triple back tick, uh, and then the R creates this grayed out area. That's my code chunk. So it's set aside like here's code that's running. And there it is. And then to display the graph, blam. There it is. There's a scatter plot of my fake data that I made. Cool. Now we're going to run the regression itself. Run that regression in a code chunk. Here's the results. I told it to present them. You don't have to, but I did. In my paragraph, you'll notice that I mentioned what the regression is. I, so I'm looking at these intercept and Sorry, I'm looking at the beta zero and the beta one here. 9.90490 for the intercept, 2.02895 for the beta one. It shouldn't surprise us that there's pretty close to the actual 10 and two because it's fake data and super clean. Now, if you're doing homework or if you're iterating on a project or if you're presenting something to your boss or stakeholders, there's a good chance that what you first type might not be your final product. And you might want to make little changes. And so I strongly encourage you not to type 9.0490 in your code. Do not type 2.02895 in your code. Instead, we want to include this somehow, where it extracts those coefficients and it's going to print out the value of them. And that is actually very easy to do. Remember the back ticks made it look like we were copying code from R. Okay, here's that my regression, my reg coefficients one that I just showed you. If you proceed that text with an R, but still inside the back ticks like this, that's going to give you the number, that 9.09, whatever it was. And then this one is going to give you that other number that we did. And then down here, I'm going to show you what happens if you round it. Let's go back to our document. All right, so here's where I just had it in text with no R before. Here's where I added an R before those labels. And here is where I told it to round that. I never typed a number except for indexing my coefficients, but I never typed these and there they are. How is that helpful? It makes it really easy. If you need this number in your text somewhere, I can say something like for every single unit increase in X, the model predicts that Y changes by 2.029. It automatically put that coefficient there. I didn't have to type it. So later, if we wanted to sort of change our data. Well, yeah, don't maybe not change our data, but if we wanted to change something about the model or something earlier in our code, it would not be hard for me to do so. Right? If I made this data be five instead, it's going to take a minute to knit. So hang on. Now that that knitted differently, you'll see that the regression changed. My documents already updated. My scatter plot changed. My documents already upgraded updated. My interpretation changed. The model predicts that Y changes by 5.029. The model's already updated. Everything is just there. So when it knits, the whole thing's done. Um, so yeah, that is a brief intro to our markdown. I think I covered a lot of the main stuff you're going to need to deal with. I hope it's helpful. If not, too bad. Go try ChatGPT. Good luck, guys. Have fun.